Good day, students of Ordoneta City. We are now on the fourth week of the third quarter. Subject, Statistics and Probability. This week, our video presentation is divided into two parts. This is part one, and our topic is all about normal random variable. I'm Mr. Jeffrey M. Soriano, your virtual instructor for this week. In this presentation, we would like to master the following learning competencies. At the end of the week, the learner illustrates a normal random variable and its characteristics. Identifies region under the normal curve corresponding to different standard normal value. So let us begin by studying what a density curve is. Let's take a look at the probability distribution of some random variables. Example, coin flips. When a coin is flipped three times, the sample space will be capital S equals HHH. That means you get head on the first coin flip, head on the second, and head on the third. HHT stands for getting a head on the first flip head on the second flip and tail on the third flip hth thh htt tht tth and ttt so if x is a random variable and it represents the number of heads then the value for ttt is 0 the value for HTT, THT, TTH is 1. Take note that we are only counting the number of heads in the three coin flips. And 2 for HHT, HTH, and TTH. 3 for HHH. The probability of obtaining 0 head is 1 over 8. The probability of obtaining one head is 3 over 8. The probability of obtaining two heads is 3 over 8. And the probability of obtaining three heads on those three coin flips is 1 over 8. Take note that when you add all the probabilities, then you will get 1. That means our probability distribution is consistent. So shown at the right is the density curve for this discrete random variable. On the x-axis are the possible values of the random variables written. And the probabilities are written on the y-axis. So looking at the graph, the probability of obtaining 0 is 0 0.175. I'm sorry, it's 125. That's the equivalent decimal representation of 1 over 8. The probability of getting a 1 is 3 over 8 or in decimal it's 0 0.375. Now the density curve is a graphic representation of the probability distribution. Now this is an example of a discrete random variable but how does a density curve looks like when we a continuous random variable? Such examples of density curves are as follows. Notice that th these are composed of curves that are irregularly shaped. So sometimes the, the, uh, the values for the random variable are concentrated on the left or sometimes concentrated on the right. But there are enormous time times that the distribution of the probabilities is symmetrical. This is what we call a normal curve. So we use a mathematical model with a smooth bell-shaped curve to describe these bell-shaped da data distributions. These models are called normal curves or normal distributions. They were first called normal because the pattern occurred in so many different types of common measurements. 
the general shape of the mathematical model used to generate a normal curve looks like this. Now the area under a curve represents the probabilities. An example of probability distribution that have bell-shaped density curve is the height of a human adult. We can observe that the height of a human adult is dense around the average that's located at the center. Ibig sabihin, malaki ang chance na pag nag-random pick ka ng isang human adult, ang height niya ay malapit sa average height. And there is a small chance that the height of the randomly picked adult is very short or very tall. So there are many normal curves. Even though all normal curves have the same bell shape, they vary in their center and spread, as shown at the right. Because normal curves are mathematical models, we use Greek letters to represent the mean and standard deviation of a normal curve. The mean of a normal distribution locates its center. We use the Greek letter mu to represent the mean. We use the Greek letter sigma to represent the standard deviation of a normal distribution. The standard deviation determines the spread of the distribution. In fact, the shape of a normal curve is completely determined by specifying its standard deviation. As we will see, if two normal distributions have the same standard deviation, then the shapes of their normal curves will be identical. So following are some observations we can make as we look at the figure above. The black and the red normal curves have means or centers at mu equals 10. However, the red curve is more spread and thus has a larger standard vibration. Notice that the red normal curve is also shorter. This makes sense because these curves are probability density curves, so the area under each curve has to be 1. The black and the green normal curves have the same standard deviation or spread. However, their means are different. So let us formally define what a normal random variable is. A variable is said to be normally distributed or have a normal distribution if its density curve has the shape of a normal curve, a special bell-shaped curve. Figure 4.1 shows the normal curve. A density curve is a graph that shows probability. So the area under a density curve is equal to 100%. So ano bang makikita natin sa diagram na yan? Anong ibig sabihin yan? So, based on the diagram, the probability that your random variable will have a value that is somewhere between plus or minus 1 standard deviation away from the mean is 68.26%. The probability that your random variable will have a value of plus or minus 2 standard deviation away from the mean is 95.44% and the probability that your random variable will have a value that is somewhere between negative 3 and positive 3 standard deviations away from the mean is 99.73% so let's have a summary of the characteristics of a normal curve the mean median and mode are equal so the normal curve is bell-shaped and it's symmetric about the mean. The total area under the curve is equal to 1. The normal curve approaches but never touches the x-axis. And between mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma, the graph is concave down. And elsewhere, the graph is concave up. The point at which the graph of changes concavity are called inflection points. So this is the end of part 1. I hope you have learned something from this lesson. So thank you for watching. Always be safe. Stay home. 
and learn from home. See you in part 2.